This scripture is about a story where Elisha the prophet found himself in a place called Gilgal and at that time there was a famine in the land of Gilgal. There was a famine throughout the land of Israel and then Elisha came to a place called Gilgal and settled there. And the Bible said, whilst he was there in Gilgal, there came a certain man from Baal Shalisha and brought the man of God bread of the first fruits, 20 loaves of barley, and full ears of corn in the husk thereof. And he said, Give unto the people that they may eat. And his servitor said, What? Should I set this before an hundred men? And he said again, Give the people that they may eat. For thus saith the Lord, They shall eat and shall live thereof. So he set it before them, and they did eat and left thereof, according to the word of God. So there is famine in the land, in the land of Israel. Gilgal has got a famine, but there was a place called Baal Shalisha. And in Baal Shalisha, they were blessed enough to harvest their barley and corn. And a certain man took the first fruits of the barley and prepared some bread and carried 20 loaves of bread and some ears of corn in the husk thereof and took them to the man of God. I believe with all my heart that anybody who is in a land that is in famine, there is another land that has no famine. And whatever you lack, wherever you are, God can move somebody from somewhere else to bring a supply to your need. So you live in Gilgal. There is famine in Gilgal, but there is a place called Baal Shalisha, and there is no famine in Baal Shalisha. Now this place called Baal Shalisha, to give you a little historical background to Baal Shalisha. Baal Shalisha was a, a part of Palestine, or let me call it maybe a part of Israel around Ephraim. And um, Bible scholars are quite divided about exactly where it was. But some believe that Baal Shalisha, of course there is a reference to Baal Shalisha in the Bible. The, the, there is a reference to Baal Shalisha. It's, it's found around Mount Ephraim. Mount Ephraim. But before I get to the scripture reference, let me um, first of all begin by saying that these historians are quite confused or divided about the exact location of Baal Shalisha. But it is believed that presently, as we speak, that Baal Shalisha is around, um, is around, they now call a certain place in Palestine, Kafr Tuth. And some people believe that that is the place in Palestine where Baal Shalisha was. Some too believe that Baal Shalisha is the modern day place they call Bet Sarisa. And Bet Sarisa is a place that is 15 Roman miles away from a part of Israel called Leda. And Leda is some miles away from Ephraim. It's, it's, it's in the tribe of Ephraim. Okay. Some too believe that Baal Shalisha is a place called Sericia. And Sericia is a place that is on the west of Mount Ephraim. Now, just to tell you that this place actually existed in the Bible. If you read your Bible at the time when King Saul was looking for his father's donkeys that were lost, my Bible tells me in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter number 9 and the verse number 4, that in looking for the donkeys, King Saul went through some places and did not find the donkeys. He said that King Saul passed through Mount Ephraim, did not find the donkeys. Then he went through the land of Shalisha. Everybody say Shalisha. 
So he went through a land called Shalisha, but he did not find the donkeys. Shalisha is related to Baal Shalisha. Actually, it is the same place. But why is this Baal Shalisha? And why is that one Shalisha? The place is called Shalisha in this scripture, but not Baal Shalisha because at this particular time, it was called Shalisha. It was later on when Jezebel and her husband called Ahab, King Ahab. When Ahab and, and, and Jezebel came on the throne of Israel, they brought Baal worship or Baal worship into the land of Egypt. Sorry, into the land of Israel. And they named the Shalisha after Baal. So Baal Shalisha is made of two words. Baal and Shalisha. Baal means Lord. And Shalisha, it means a rounding out or a completion. So when Jezebel and her husband Ahab said Baal Shalisha, what they were saying is that Baal is responsible for making your life complete. Baal is responsible for supplying your every need. Baal is responsible for making you complete and rounding out your life. But you and I are not worshippers of Baal. We are worshippers of Jehovah. So our Baal Shalisha is not a place where idols are worshipped. But our Baal Shalisha is a place called heaven from where God supplies our need. So here is Elisha in a place called Gilgal. They are broke in Gilgal. There is famine in Gilgal. But God brings him a supply out of the land of of Baal Shalisha and if help could come from Baal Shalisha where Baal or Baal is Lord you and I help can come to us from the God of heaven the earth is broke but heaven is not broke your house is broke but heaven is not broke that is why God supplies our need. I, I believe that whether your problem is a problem of salvation, a problem of healing, a problem of deliverance, a problem of victory, a problem of financial prosperity, that there is a God in heaven who owns the silver and the gold, who can and will supply your need. Sometimes I hear people say that the days of manna are over. I don't know why they say that. I, I think they say that because they have not experienced miracles before. But ladies and gentlemen, I have seen so many miracles in life. The miracles of divine provision. That is why I wrote behind this book. I said, divine provision is real. The fact that God wants to supply your need. And if God does not supply needs, even the Lord's prayer, we should stop praying it. But God supplies needs. He brings our needs to us. When you read your Bible in Matthew chapter 6, the verse number 9, Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray. And he said, After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father which art in heaven. Somebody shout, my Father is in heaven. Father. Come on, shout it, my Father is in heaven. And for those of you that believe you are orphans, you are not orphans, your Father is in heaven. The father you had on earth was just a conduit by which you came into the world. But your real father is in heaven. That is why God told even widows. He said to widows, he said, I am your husband. So in the case of God, there's no widow and there's no fatherless. There's no broke and there's no despise. There's no rejected. He said, if your father and your mother should forsake you, the Lord will take you up. God is the father of the fatherless. He's the husband of the husbandless. Am I talking to somebody at all? And I pray that today, after today, God will take over, begin to supply your need. He said, our father, which art in heaven. He said, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our father, which art in heaven. Now, this heaven is the equivalent of Baal Shalisha. To the unbelievers, it's Baal Shalisha. But to us, our Baal Shalisha is heaven. So when Elisha sat there, his only hope was Baal Shalisha. Our father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And the first will to be done on earth as it is in heaven is give us this day our daily bread. 
I know some of you sometimes, some of you sometimes pretend that daily bread is not important. But as soon as he said that kingdom come, he said, give us this day our daily bread. Thy will be done on earth. Give us this day our daily bread. Lead us and forgive us our debtors. Our debts, I beg your pardon. Forgive us our debts, even as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Now watch this. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. I notice that ladies and gentlemen, whenever God gives you your daily bread, it is easier for you to forgive. I will give you an example. Let, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. If you have a company or a business and your storekeeper steals all your money and runs away and after two months you are able to build about 20 of those stores far bigger than the one he stole. And then another person, his storekeeper stole his money and ran away and after two years he cannot even get food to eat. Which of these two will find it easier to forgive? The one who had 20 stores in place of the one that they stole will find it easier. L listen, do you know why it was easy for Joseph to forgive his brothers? He said, you meant it for evil. But God has turned it to what? Good. Therefore, I am able to forgive you. The reason why you are so unforgiving and bitter, sometimes it's because you are broke. Hey, when you are broke, you can be bitter. Sometimes you meet some pastors and they're like, I would never forgive that my assistant pastor. He broke away and carried away all my members. That is because when he was going, the souls he took, you have not been able to replace them. But if the man broke away, went away with souls and after that your church is full with souls that are even stronger than the ones they carried away it will be easier to forgive it is easier for you to say father forgive them for they know not what they are doing when you know you are going to paradise but if you know you are going to hang on that cross forever Jesus said forgive them because he knew that that day he was going to paradise. Huh? For example, if a landlord sacks you from an Atakwami house and there's a mansion waiting for you, when you are walking out you say, Father, forgive him because he does not know what he's doing. He does not know he's promoting me. He does not know he's blessing me. He does not know he's taking me to a better place. Any one of you here that somebody is treating evil, may the evil bring you a promotion in the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on, shout yes and pray. Now you sit down because I have not started preaching. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to introduce my message. Forgive us our debts, even, uh, even as we forgive our debtors, because daily bread has come. And lead us not into temptation. It will amaze you that many cases of temptation are because of the lack of daily bread. There are many people that are falling into temptation every day. And it's not just because they want to fall into temptation, but it be an panunti. Deliver us from evil. Lack of daily bread can take you into evil. That is, listen, lack of daily bread is what you can make you see shito and the shito is rotten. You taste it and you know that this thing, if you eat it, you get diarrhea and you say, all die, be die. May the Lord give you your daily bread. So Jesus said, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And before all this, forgive them. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. He said, give me my daily bread. Lord, I will praise you, but when the daily bread comes, you know, I know some people say, you can have joy whether God blesses you or not. It's true. 
Though the fig tree blossom or does not blossom, yet I will joy in the Lord. But Jesus said something which made more sense than that. He said, pray unto the Father and he will answer your prayer. And when he pray that he will do it for you in my name, so that when the prayer is answered in my name, your joy will be full. So you can have joy when your prayers are not answered. But if you need fullness of joy, may your prayer be answered. May the God of heaven answer your prayer. Yesterday I said we didn't come to God for miracle. We didn't come for God for healing. We didn't come to God for blessing. We didn't come to God for favor. But we know that although we did not come to him for all these things, God is the giver of the bonus. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Come on, shout a yes and pray. Somebody shout Baal Shalisha. Come on, scream it, Baal Shalisha. And I want you to turn to somebody and tell the person, the father cares. Tell somebody, God cares. Tell somebody, God cares. You know, God is not insensitive. God, God, God is not just sitting in heaven and doesn't care about what you are going through on earth. I like something Jesus was speaking, and then he said in the book of Matthew, chapter 20, Matthew 6, from the verse number 25, Jesus says something very interesting about, about the best of the air. He said, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. For it's not life more than meat, and the body more than raiment. Go to the next verse. He said, behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, neither do they gather into barns, yet your heavenly father feed up them. Are you not much better than they? God takes care of birds. He takes care of foxes. He takes care of rabbits and rats. God takes care of cockroaches. Even mosquitoes have a place in, their, in his plan. That is why even mosquitoes, God has prepared something for them to eat. And what they eat is your blood. And when you slap a mosquito, blood comes out and not mercury. Even mosquitoes have got provision. You are better than a mosquito. I pray that you will understand that God thinks about you. That God cares about you. And it's not about where you live. You live in Gilgal, but you are connected and your destiny is linked up with a place called Baal Shalisha and your Baal Shalisha is heaven. I pray from today that heaven will begin to take care of the things that concern you. You begin to receive the supply from heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus, may the God of heaven begin to supply all your need and look after you. I showed you this place called Baal Shalisha. Baal Shalisha. Our Baal Shalisha is heaven. Somebody shout heaven. Shout it heaven. Mayo Kosovo attire. I remember when I was in secondary school. There was a guy, his nickname was California. Chema, you remember California? California was my classmate. He used to wear his shorts short like that. And the belt was thick. And he used to walk about. And everybody was in California. But California was broke. The man was called California, but he was broke. And that is because he had never been to California. Many Christians are like that. Heaven is my home. Have you no heaven? Have you no heaven? And they are waiting that one day they'll go to heaven and you hear them singing some songs. One day when I go to heaven, things will be well. But God is not waiting for you to come to heaven for things to be well. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What God can do tomorrow, he can do today. And your joy does not begin from heaven. What does not begin in heaven, your joy begins here on earth. May you have the days of heaven on earth. Anything God has earmarked for you to receive in heaven, may you begin to receive it here on earth. May the house you live in begin to look like heaven. May the food you eat
begin to look like heaven. May your clothing you wear begin to look like heaven. Look at the clothing they will wear in heaven. They wash their robes in the blood of Jesus. And their, their garments were crystal white and clean. Their walls were jasper and their streets were gold. Anything that is in heaven, may you begin to experience it on earth. Listen to me. When you look at the description of heaven, God intended that you should start experiencing it on earth. The streets are made of gold, but don't you notice that Obuasi is not in heaven, but Obuasi has gold. Don't you notice that Nangodi has not only got cows, but there's gold in Nangodi. The day they said there's gold in the upper east region, then I told myself, then it means there's no poverty anywhere on earth. Prosperity is either up there in heaven or under the ground. The unbelievers cannot access heaven. So they go on the ground to take the gold. But you and I can access heaven. Therefore our father who art in heaven so that we don't go on the ground to find the gold. May you begin to discover your gold from heaven. May your God begin to supply your need. If you can believe it, God will take care of you and not the government of Ghana. If you can believe it, your financial needs will be met by heaven and not the bank of Ghana and not your employer. Receive the supply of your need in the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on, shout yes and pray. Oh, pastor, you don't know. My village, oh, my town, everything is broke. I remember right from the early days of my Christianity, when I was a young man and the Lord spoke to me and said, go to Bogatanga, stay there all your life. I told him I'm going. But he warned me, he said, when you go, don't look at the land. Look at me. Lift up your eyes. Look at me. Don't look at the land. So you know what? I've never been here looking at Bogatanga. I look at heaven. We are born again from heaven. You are a new creature. The day you were born again, you became a new creature. All things passed away. Behold, all things became new. You lost your identity as an African. Your identity as a Ghanaian. Your identity and as an upper eastern as a northern region as a western region as an ashanti region as a greater Accra region you lost your identity and you assumed the identity of heaven so your citizenship is from heaven from whence also cometh our lord jesus and if your citizenship is from heaven though you are on earth you are an ambassador of christ here on earth and god will take care of you not according to the economy of Ghana, but according to the economy of heaven. Receive the manifestation of the supply of your need from heaven in the name of Jesus. Come on, shout yes. You see, everything about Christianity is founded on faith. Heaven is real. Isaiah chapter 55 and the verse number 10 I read a scripture it said as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven everybody shout from heaven now from heaven from heaven from heaven no 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 who can I get um Cynthia can you take um, a bigger towel Where, where's where's my towel the hand towel give me give me a hand towel thank you take it put it in water do, do it like this one and bring it to me put it in water Cold water, not hot one. Put it in water. Squeeze out the water. Squeeze out the water completely. And then sanctify it and bring it to me. Mm. Now, the way I'm wetting the... I can give this to my wife now. Thank you. The way I'm wetting the handkerchiefs and using... Oh, she put it in hot water. Is that hot water? Yehoah, I think I... I think when I said don't put it in hot water, people talk I was, I was crazy. But normally, I'm very careful to give instructions and say it again as if the person hasn't heard me. 
All right, let me go on. Let me go on. Isaiah 55 and the verse number 10. As the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and does not return hither, but water the earth and maketh it to bring forth and to bud, that he may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that cometh forth or goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. As the rain comes down and as the snow from heaven. That's the thing. So that I don't struggle with the smaller one. Okay. Now, as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven. Everybody say the snow from heaven. Come on, shout it, the snow from heaven. Now, do you notice that anytime you want to water your farm or you want to water your garden, you can, use to use, you can choose to use water from a well. You can choose to use water from water company. But if you have faith and you can believe in seasons, the water can fall from the skies. In the same way, you can get your food from earthly sources. But there is a point in time when your faith will allow you to receive your supply from heaven. Tonight, we necessitate, we occasion, we compel, we pull heavenly supply in the area of our need and in the direction of our need. Whatever you need, may God bring it to you from heaven. But you know, some people don't believe that heaven is a real place. In fact, for some people, heaven is like the California of my classmate. They use heaven in prayer, but they don't believe anything can come from it. But I pray that this time when you speak about heaven, it will be more real than Great Britain. Assuming you have your father and he lives in America, I can promise you, every now and then, he will send you dollars from America. If your father lives in Japan, every now and then, he will send you Japanese yen from Japan. But I'm here to tell somebody that your father lives in heaven. And because he lives in heaven, but the earth is the loss and the fullness thereof. The cattle on the hill, the silver and the gold are his. Anything God wants to give to you from heaven, may God begin to supply your need. You are not like my friend California, who used to say California, but never received dollars from California. You are saying heaven. May you receive salvation from heaven, healing from heaven, deliverance from heaven, breakthrough from heaven, favor from heaven. Come on, shout it! Yes. That is your Baal Shalisha. Your Baal Shalisha is heaven. Malachi 3:10. Bring ye in all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, hear with and see. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. This afternoon I was praying about this scripture and the Lord told me, he said, heaven has windows. Heaven has windows. And when he talks about the windows of heaven, it's not like these windows. It's talking about the gates of heaven. Every entrance, every opening in heaven God uses every available opening to release your blessing. He said, prove me now here with and see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing such that there is no room enough to receive it. One day Paul wrote to the Philippians and he said to the Philippians, he said, uh, he said in Philippians chapter 4 and the verse number 18, the verse number 18 of Philippians, Paul told the Philippians, he said, I have all. Everybody say, I have all. May you receive everything. He said, I have all. I abound. That means I have received everything and I have not received everything one. I have received everything two, three, four, five in abundance. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things that were sent to me from you, an order 
of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing unto God. And because of that, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. May God supply your need according to his riches. Whenever demonstrators are demonstrating, may God deliver you from the wahala of demonstration. May you never sit down and wait for single spine. Because it will make you spineless. And may you not depend on sadder project. Because it will make you sadder than you were. May the Lord help you to depend on the riches in glory by Christ Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. May you look up to heaven. Your prosperity is not with the ministry of health. Your prosperity is not with the ministry of education. Your prosperity is not with, 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 with NADMO. Your prosperity is not with fire service. I don't know whether there is water service. And I don't know whether there is air service. But may your prosperity and your blessing depend on God. Pastors, your prosperity is not in your church. Your prosperity is not in the offering basket. Your prosperity is not in tithes and offerings. Your prosperity is not in a particular church member. Don't let a church member in your church go on transfer and you will scream, may woo. The church member comes to say, Daddy, I'm going on transfer and this is the guy who used to bring you plantain and bring you cassava and bring you checks every now and then. And the person comes to say, Daddy, I'm going on transfer. Then you say, may woo. Father, I pray for him. Send him away in peace. But Lord, I will be in pieces. When he leaves your office, then he starts singing a song. Mommy, may your prosperity never depend on any human being. Come on, can I hear you shout an amen? May God take over your prosperity. May the Lord supply all your need in the name of Jesus. Listen, your landlord cannot control where you live. When your landlord sacks you from a house, may God give you a better house. If the government takes their car, may God give you a better car. If your wife refuses to give you food, may God give you better food. If your husband refuses to give you chop money, may God open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I command it, I demand it, I request from God that for every Fountain Gate Chapel Church, may God bring finances, may God bring a supply, may God supply the need of every Fountain Gate Pastures Assembly in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every Fountain Gate Chapel Church, may God open the windows of heaven and supply the needs of the house. We prophesy it tomorrow about this time farming shall be ended we shall not depend on offering baskets we shall not depend on tithes and offerings but we will depend on the economy of heaven may your business be financed by heaven may your house be financed by heaven may your organization be financed by heaven come and lift up your hand and scream it like your voice is yours press James agreed with the rest. James, he agreed with Isaiah. He agreed with Malachi. He agreed with Paul. And in James chapter 1, the verse number 17, he said, for every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the father of light in whom is no variableness nor shadow of turning may your god in heaven begin to supply your need may god heal your disease may god deliver you from demonic oppression wherever the doctor has failed may god take over 
wherever the lawyer has failed may the supreme advocate in heaven take over in the name of Jesus wherever the bank has failed you may God take over may every human failure on the earth uh, gravitate upon your life uh, divine assistance uh, divine provision uh, divine help uh, come on shout it yeah! Our Baal Shalisha is heaven. Therefore, anytime you read behind this book, bread from Baal Shalisha, Brother Eastwood is not talking about the Baal Shalisha around Ephraim. I'm talking about the Baal Shalisha heaven. I'm talking about where God is seated. At the right hand of God, the throne of God the Father. So I have spoken to you about the place called Baal Shalisha. And I've told you that your Baal Shalisha is heaven. Can I now just slip in something and tell you what your bread is? Your bread is your healing. Jesus said, I cannot take the bread of the children and give it to dogs. And that bread is healing. May your healing come from heaven. Supernatural healing. Supernatural deliverance. May God touch your body. If the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwells in you. I command your bones to be healthy, your flesh to be healthy, your blood to be healthy, your spirit man to be healthy. If I were you, I would scream like my voice is mine and clap my hands like they belong to me. Come and clap those hands and scream it like your voice is yours. Shout it like your shout. Your bread is the word of God. Mm -hmm. Your bread is the word of God. Your bread is physical food. Because Jesus used to provide physical food. And he still provides physical food. Their kid a man from Baal Shalisha. The man, the man, the man, the man, the man. Maho to se kebe ha. Yele mazuti ya tata. Iko lo si biria to si alaha. Nanka bori kabasundia. La breni meke biria o to si animitai. La katunde ne me kriando zi eta. Elijah is sitting in a place and there's farming and a man appeared. Brother Eastwood was sitting on earth in my sin, in my lack, walking about on a baller until a man came from heaven and his name is Jesus. Jesus the man. Oh, how I love that man. That man of Galilee. The Prince of Peace. The Lord and my Savior. The government is on his shoulders. He is the Prince of Peace. I'm talking about the man that didn't come from the physical Galilee. I'm talking about the Prince from heaven. I'm talking about the Son of the Living God. I'm talking about the man that opened the windows of heaven and came down. Born in Bethlehem, but of heavenly origin. Born by Mary, but the Son of God. Born in a manger, but the earth could not contain him. I'm talking about Jesus. They gave birth to him, and they washed him with water, but he walked on water. They gave him breast milk, but the cattle on the thousand hills, they belong to him. I'm talking about Jesus. My Messiah, your Messiah. My God, your God. My Father, your Father. The king of all the universe. The king of the princes of the universe. The prince of the kings of the earth. Jesus is his name. The son of the living God. The one that the wicked people took. And they slew him. Nailed him on the cross. Slew him. Buried him. But on the third day. He broke the chains of heaven. And broke the chains of hell. And broke the chains of the earth. And he said all chains are broken. In heaven. On earth. And under the earth. And hail. Oh power. All authority.
authority is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Receive it right now. The manifestation of the grace of the Messiah on your life. A man came from heaven. When I got here tonight and there was light off, I said, the devil is a liar. The devil knows what is coming. I said, the devil knows what is coming. The devil knows that after today, no light off in your life. Your finances, no light off. Your provision, no light off. Your money, no light off. Your spiritual life, no light off. Your righteousness, no light off. Come on, scream like your voice is yours and press it. Shout like your voice is yours and thank him. Come on, give him praise. Scream it. I want to get some victory. I want to hear somebody who understands the power of God, who understands praise, who understands uh, that the man came uh, from heaven. Come on, shout! Jump if you can jump. Jump if you can jump. Scream if you can scream. Shout if you can shout. Clap your hands if you can do it. Yeah! I can't hear you. Scream. Your voice is yours. There is power in the house. There is grace in the house. There is an anointing in the house. Come on, shout. shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God if I were you I'll be clapping and screaming right now listen anytime you were hungry and he didn't give you the food it wasn't because he couldn't do it it was because it was not time yet then the man from heaven the man from spiritual Baal Shalisha appeared at the wedding feast. They came to him, they said, Sir, the wine is finished. He said, Woman, my hour is not yet. But it was a few seconds away. He called them, he said, Fill the water pots with water. Hey, the man from Baal Shalisha. Even wine finished, cried, Don't supply. After that, the man from Baal Shalisha. Is walking by the sea. He sees a boat standing by and the fishermen are washing their net. He said, who is the owner of this ship? I want to preach from the ship. The owner came. He said, master, the ship, now my own. Now I don't tire. I don't frustrate. Master, I feel the whole night. I don't catch nothing. Nothing they come with, brother. He said, give me your boat. Let me preach from it. When he finished preaching, he said, launch out into the deep. Let down your net for the drought. The man said, master, we have toiled all night. We have taken nothing. But I understand that you are the man from heaven. I understand that you are the man from Baal Shalisha. At thy word, I will let down the net. And he let down his net. And there was a catch of fish. 
I'm telling somebody right now that man from Baal Shalisha, Jesus, is standing in your house, he is standing in your business, he is standing in your church. And if I were you, I would shout like my voice is mine and press. I like that. Play the drum. The drum. What do I play? You are not the one playing. Hey, is it a drum or a plate? Are you afraid of a drum? Trinity Baptist Church. Whenever I go there, he says, Daddy, media will preach in the Nina Emido, but send Crofon board the Anobo. Now, oh, yeah, nine is saying Come on, shut Yeah, 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 Receive your healing, your breakthrough, your supply, your favor. Shut. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, listen, I, I, I prepared for this exercise. Today, Pastor Ziga was in the house. I was lying like this. Then he would raise my leg like this. And then he will, let, he will do me like this. I was like, Akwasi Apia is training his players. So, and they robbed me with, with Akobam. They, they robbed me with something else. And they, they strengthened my muscles. And I am ready for tonight. I, I'm ready to jump. I'm ready to preach. I'm ready to shout. And I know there is somebody like that. Come on, scream. Like your voice is yours. Yeah. The man from heaven. Hallelujah. The man from heaven. One day standing in the wilderness. He had come from Baal Shalisha. From heaven. No shortage. One day in the wilderness, he told his disciples, I see about 15,000 people here, but give them food to eat. They said, sir, send these people away because we don't have food in the wilderness. He said, give them to eat. They brought him five loaves of bread and two fishes. And this man from spiritual Baal Shalisha took the five loaves of bread and blessed them and gave it to the people to eat. Ladies and gentlemen, any bread in your house, I see the man from Baal Shalisha, the man from heaven, he will multiply the bread in your house. He will multiply the money in your house. The money in your business. The money in your pocket. The money in your bank account. Come on, shout yes and pray. Sit down. Sit down. Listen. One day. At the sea. Peter had backslidden. He had gone back a fishing. Makoto Siata. Went back to fish. Toiled the whole night. Got nothing. Jesus stood at the seashore and called them. By the time they came to the seashore, fish was baking on fire. And he gave them fish and bread and honey to eat. I'm announcing to you that the man from Baal Shalisha, Jesus, is in your house. But let me conclude like this. That this man is different from the man who brought the bread from Baal Shalisha. Because the man who came from Baal Shalisha brought the bread. 
But this other one who came from heaven was the man from Baal Shalisha or the man from heaven. But he himself was also the bread that came from heaven. John chapter 6 verse 48. John 6 48. Oh glory. going to, to 51. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and they are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever and the bread that I will give him is my flesh which I will give for the life of the world. It is because of verse 51 that we are taking the communion today. That Jesus is the bread from heaven. He supplies our need, physical need. But when we eat his body, we drink his blood in the communion. When we are born again and receive him into our hearts, we have eternal life. Let me conclude my message tonight by saying, it doesn't matter how much money you have, how much food you have. It doesn't matter how many cars you own. You will have them, but you will still die. Your fathers ate manna in the wilderness, and they are dead. But I am the bread of life. Those that eat me shall never die. The most important thing about our lives as Christians is that this man from Baal Shalisha did not only come to meet our need, he himself meets our need. You don't only have a house. You don't only have a wife. You don't only have a husband. You don't only have friends. You don't only have a bicycle. You don't only have a motto. You have Jesus in your heart. The most important thing. Lift up your hand. The man from heaven. Oh Jesus. Becky, can you sing that song again? One day at a time. Makatori de Bosia. Don't worry about what will I eat? What will I drink? May your course over heart. May God supply your need. Come on. Shall we go fast? Thank you, Jesus. Listen, if you are sitting anywhere and you are just trusting God, when the song starts, wherever you feel you want to kneel down, you want to stand. And from today, may He take care of your life on a daily basis. May your faith be steady. I'm only human. Oh Jesus. I'm just, just a woman. Help me believe. That I have to climb 
that you give me the strength to do every day what I love to do. with your life. Talk to him in one minute.